Okay, so how do we calculate a cross product? There are two ways to do it. You have to be able to do both. One's kind of a long computational way, and the other is a quick way, and you really have to be able to do both. So here's the quick way, which is related to what we saw here. The magnitude of the cross product is given by the magnitude of the first vector times the magnitude of the second vector times the sine of the angle between them. So if this is A and that's B and that's theta, AB sine theta, that's the magnitude of the cross product. Now does that correspond to what we saw? When the two vectors were right angles to each other, sine theta was 1, and we got kind of a big purple arrow. When the two vectors were either on top of each other or anti-parallel, sine theta was 0, and we got 0. So that's the magnitude. The direction is given by a right-hand rule. And this is one that you have to use your right hand for. So everybody get your right hand out, OK? And what you do is you hold your hand like this. And for this, for this part, OK, let's not do it this way. You hold it, <laughs> this, your wrist has to be straight, OK? Your wrist can't flop. No floppy wrists. So you put your fingers in the direction of the first vector. And then you curl your fingers through the angle theta toward the second vector, and your thumb sticks out in the direction of the cross product. So in the way we've got A and B here, A cross B, the cross product would be into the board. So three dimensions. And it, it's all, the order matters, because let's do B cross A, OK? If we do B. Now notice that if we point our fingers in the direction of B, we're going to break our wrist if we try to curl our fingers up. So we actually have to rotate the wrist and then curl the fingers through theta. And now your thumb sticks out that way. And so B cross A is not the same as A cross B. The order matters. So it's always first vector, second vector. The angle between them is always uh, smaller than 180 degrees. You never go. You always go the, the short way. OK, so, that, so that's the right-hand rule. And you have to be able to do it that way. Once I had a student who came into a final exam with a big R written on the back of that hand and a big L written on the back of that hand so that he would actually use the correct hand. Because if you're right-handed, it's really very tempting to keep the pen in your right hand and use your le no. Left-handed people have a real advantage here. They can keep their pencil in their left hand and do the cross products with their right hand. But. However, there's another way to, to evaluate it numerically. And it looks like this. So A cross B is the following vector. This is, got to get it right, OK. A sub y times b sub z minus a, uh, a sub z times b sub y. That's the x component. And the y component is a sub z bx minus ax bz. And the z component is AXBY minus AYBX. And how do you remember this order? Well, the usual mnemonic is to do this. You write, you write this, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, with an arrow going to the right. And the way you interpret this is the following. If you want the x component, what are the next two things, y and z? So the x component starts out yz minus zy. OK, now let's say we want the y component. What are the next two letters? Well, the next two letters are z and x. So the y component would be azbx minus axbz. And now if you want the z component, 
the next two letters are xy, so we have axby minus aybx. And a lot of times some of these terms are zero, which is really nice, but sometimes you just have to crank through the whole thing. And sometimes this will be the thing you want to do. And some, But you can see that it's actually going to be pretty simple to do magnitude of A, magnitude of B, sine theta, and use your right hand to get the, the results. Okay, so let's try some. <coughs> 